Alright, welcome back to another video, and if you couldn't tell by the title, today we're going to be trying to really fix an overheating issue with my PC. Uh, the problem mostly, as far as I can tell right now at least, pertains to both the VRMs and the North Bridge. And as you can see in this sort of clip here of me taking the system apart, there's a heat pipe shared between both of them, so they're both distributing sort of the, the amount of heat equally. And uh, here's the screenshots for both of the products that I used in this video, and I'll have links to them in the description below if you want to pick one up for your own rig. Uh, so let's get started. So I kind of want you guys to pay attention to those darker spots that you see on the motherboard. Now, those spots are not any sort of residue or anything on the board. I've tried wiping it off. It's actually due to the heat of the VRMs causing the paint to, I wouldn't say char, but it, it has changed the color of the paint. It's made it more darker. And because of that, that led me to believe that the VRMs are overheating way more than their capacity and the heatsink that's designed with this board is not sufficient enough, especially paired with a CPU. Now, this is not a problem that's new. Um, a lot of the people also have found their own solutions to this problem. Now, the problem with me is that I don't have an air conditioner in the summer, and especially with the really hot days that we've had, the machine would lock up every 5 or 10 minutes and that's very obnoxious especially when you're trying to do day to day things. Now if you're web browsing and doing light stuff it's not a problem but as soon as you start doing anything like video editing or gaming that's when you most likely see the problem. And that's the reason why I haven't been able to upload a video in so long is because every time I try to render something on this machine it would hard lock and because of that I haven't been able to put anything out. So now let's move on to the sort of instructional bit of this video. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your stock heatsink off the board. I have mine up sideways to give you guys a better idea of what you're looking for. Now, you're going to want to look for the four screws holding down the heatsink. In my case, I have to remove both the north bridge and the VRM heatsink since they both attach by heat pipe. And I don't feel like ripping off the heat pipe. And in the next image, you're going to see the highlighted four screws for my specific motherboard. Now, obviously, this is going to be different based on your motherboard. So make sure you check before you actually start unscrewing things. Alright, so in this next bit here, what you want to do is just remove all the screws, set them aside in a safe place, don't lose them in case for whatever reason you need to reinstall this heatsink. And I'm going to fast forward this bit here so you guys don't get bored, and we'll move on to the next step. And after that, all you have to really do is just take the heatsink off and set it aside. So the next bit is pretty straightforward. Grab some rubbing alcohol, a paper towel, and clean off the old thermal paste on a chipset. Now apologies for the frame being out of focus, I didn't realize this until after the fact. But yeah, you want to be careful not to break off any of the little resistors right next to the chip, or the little die. There was some dust as well that was piled up right next to the uh, VRMs, as you can see me taking an old toothbrush and cleaning it off. Make sure you use a dry brush when you're doing this. and. I do come back and, and also rub down the VRMs with some rubbing alcohol to get rid of any of the old uh, oil that was from the old silicone that was on the previous heatsink. So I went to put on the heatsink thinking, alright, this is the end of it, right? All I have to do is put this whole thing back together and I'll be done. It turns out the heatsink that I got for the VRMs is short and I thought that I was going crazy so I went back online and checked the form that I was looking at and it turns out that the later revision of this board, which I have, has more MOSFETs. So that means that he, there wasn't any heatsink that I could get that would fit this board. So that meant I had to buy another one of these, cut it, join the two together just to make one long heatsink that will cover the VRMs. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is just apply some thermal compound to the north bridge and then apply the heatsink. And the thing is with this heatsink, my only problem with it is, is that the mounting clips that it comes with are too small for the holes on this board and you have to kind of have the heatsink tilted at an angle and you'll kind of see me do this a little bit later here as you can see I'm putting it at an angle and I've tried this before if you try to put it in directly straight the the arms that it comes with to hold the clips on are way too short and the clips themselves the pins on the bottom are a bit too small so you kind of have to have it at this weird angle in order for it to stay on the board and you can't move the board too much you can't hit it or anything like that because it will want to pop off so yeah, you kind of got to be careful with this heatsink, and that's kind of my only gripe with it. It's a really nice heatsink, otherwise, like it's it's not bad. I mean, it is cheap, but it it, it looks all right. It has a fan and everything. So yeah, as you can see, once you got it in place, push on the clips, and you kind of want to wiggle it around like that to make sure the thermal paste will spread out a little bit, and also that the heatsink is properly secured. So now let's move on to the VRM heatsinks. Alright, so as you guys can see, here's the point where I got the second heatsink in this video, and you'll notice the hint, obviously, it's too long. So what I had planned to do was I was going to cut the clip 
uh, off of the one that's on the board and the one that's hanging off the board I was going to shorten and you'll see uh, the picture that I, that I have here I attempted to glue the two together using some thermal glue that I had which is just basically thermally conductive silicone uh, the silicone was past its best use date and I didn't know so I let it sit overnight and it was still it wasn't dry by the next morning and at that point I kinda just gave up on that and went ahead with this video anyways okay so these heat sinks do come with their own thermal pads the problem is they're very thin and I wanted something that was a bit more thicker or very similar to what was on there with the original heat sink that came with the motherboard now what you can see me doing here is I'm taking a flathead screwdriver and there is like a plastic uh, sheet that protects these when you first get them and I'm scoring a line into that plastic sheet so I know where to cut. Now you're not going to be able to see it on camera. And after I marked the line out I went ahead and cut a piece of this off and set it aside for now. So the next thing you're going to see me do here is I'm going to put both of their heat sinks on their top and I'm just going to grab some rubbing alcohol and clean off the bottom of it because even though I did wash it I did you know, I didn't want to have any uh, residue or anything left on it for me touching it or when we were cutting it. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the plastic film on the thermal pad. Now, there's one of these plastic films on both sides, so make sure you get the other side off before you apply it onto your motherboard. Now, you're going to see I start with a smaller side first, and I try to align it as much as I could to the edge here, as you can see. It's alright if it's a little bit off, um, when it's pressed onto the board, it will expand out a little bit, so don't worry too much about that. And the reason why I start with the smaller side first, by the way, is I kind of want it to hold both pieces together, kind of like tape, but not really. And as you can see, I do do that, and I do turn it over, and I notice there's a little bit missing on the other side, so it's just a little bit short. I do cut another piece here, you'll see in a second, uh, to make up for that. And as you can see here, once I've got the other piece on, I start pulling off the protective film on that side. And be a little bit careful when you're trying to pull it off, because sometimes, you, like you see here, you can pull up the whole thing, so be a little bit careful with that. And, yeah, you kind of just want to gently peel it off. Or if that area doesn't work, try another area like here, and there you go. And if it gets up a little bit like that, you can easily just pick it up and gently move it back. It's okay if you touch this a little bit, just try not to get too, many, uh, too much fingerprints. Alright, so the next and very simple step in this process I had to do was reapply the clips that were on the heatsink. They're very easy, you just push them back into place and then we move on to applying this onto the motherboard now like in my case since I've had to cut two of these and join them together again apologies for the camera angle uh, I did have to be a very careful when putting this on because the problem was that they're two, they're two separate halves so they kinda wanna push each other up and you'll see what I mean a little bit later on here you're gonna see a glimpse of it here uh, this is not me moving the heatsink it pops up by itself like this so what I ended up doing was I found a piece of this green wire that I had it's this plastic coated wire that you can use to tie things with and basically I grabbed each end of the fins so the last set of fins on both of the heatsinks I put the wire on it and then I started to kinda twist it together to kinda hold it in place and you'll see a little bit later on here but once I've done that it basically held itself in place and then I had cut off the excess which was very good. I didn't expect this to work. <laughs> it's a very janky solution and like I said I didn't want to have to solder the heatsink because I wasn't comfortable with doing that and in order to get this to work by the way what I did was I kinda had the wire all the way at the top I tightened it a bit and then I pushed it down so that way the further down it went the more tighter it got and that held it in place and yes I'm still running that in my PC today <laughs> And yeah, I'm still running the setup to this day, it works. The only other issue I seem to have is some slowdowns with my graphics card, especially when it gets hot and the fans start to kick up, I'll notice I'll get massive frame dips. However, that's probably a topic for another video. But other than that, yeah, the system's still running fine. Let me know if any of you guys have tried anything like this or would try anything like this. If you have, do send me pictures. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, links in the description below. And even if you know, you, you wouldn't try anything like this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below as well. Hopefully this helps one of you out there. This is a very strange video and it's not something that any, you know, that I have seen anyone else really do on YouTube. It's a very ghetto way of trying to fix a, a very strange issue. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and enjoy your day and I'll catch you all in the next one.